or hello again. Uh, really, really wonderful to be able to share these pictures from Passover with you. And today we're going to be talking about the Lord's Supper. Many people don't realize that the root or the place that the Lord's Supper actually originated from was in fact the Passover season. So when we think about Passover, we generally think about the bread and the wine. These are the most important parts for us as Christians, as believers. We do that in church as often as we like. <clears throat> um, but the meal that the Lord Jesus had on that day, uh, be, the same day when he was getting ready, or the same night when they were getting ready to take him, was in fact what was called the Passover meal. It was the Seder meal. And in that meal, this was the last meal of Christ on this earth. You know, you imagine if you're going to, you know that you're going to die. What meal would you want to eat? The Bible says that he greatly desired to eat the meal with the people who loved him. But equally, the Bible also states that there was someone there who was going to betray him. So although he had those who loved him, they had, he also had those around him who were confused by his presence on the earth. Now, that Seder meal consisted of things like the bitter herbs, which stood for the bitterness of, of slavery for the children of Israel, the salt which stood for the tears that they cried when they were in bondage, the sops and the lamb, the lamb particularly speaking <clears throat> about the, uh, the, um, the, 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 the sacrificial lamb that was killed in order to save the uh, children of Israel. But, so it's absolutely because of Passover that we have the Lord's Supper. Now, if, uh, we, we really have to look right now at the entire uh, account, and it's best to look at that in the book of, uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians 11, 23. And the reason for this is that there's something in here that will really help us to identify who Jesus is. This is it, on um, 11, 23, the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper. Note that, after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you, as you drink it in remembrance of me. Note the words after supper. You see, it's very interesting. In the Seder meal, that is the Jewish principle, at the end of the supper, there were two things left behind. There was this a piece of bread, which was called the afikamen, very special and symbolic bread. And then there was a cup, the fifth cup. There was four cups that was drunk during the meal, but the fifth cup was what they called the Elijah cup. And nobody would drink of that cup because it was part of the uh, tradition of the Jewish people to expect um, by prophecy that Elijah would come back before the Messiah would come. But according to a fee to uh, a bigger pardon, according to the word of the Lord, you in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 14, you'll find that the Lord Jesus actually declared that John the Baptist was in fact this Elijah that was to come. And so why would he take part in a ritual that's speaking of Elijah not coming? So I believe what he did was he took that Elijah cup and he broke the, the afikamen, and that's what he used for the Lord's Supper. This means that this picture of Passover is so powerful because what it's telling us is that Passover is the absolute assurance to us as the people of Christ today that Jesus Christ is exactly who he said he is. He's the absolute assurance of our faith. He's the one who can take your pain away, your sickness away, and he's the one that the Lord has sent as his son, his only begotten son, to deal with the, tr the troubles that we have in this life. He took that bread and he took that cup as an assurance of who he is. Now today, this is the final picture of the Passover. As I said during the week, you have the suffering, the bondage, you have the dealing with pride, you have the blood of Jesus Christ. You have the Lord's Supper and you have the, the Lamb of God. These are the five pictures of Passover and I pray that they will stay with you in this season and that they will bless you as you consider as we move closer to this wonderful prophetic window that's still open that Jesus Christ is the Messiah and as he was for the Jewish people, he's also for us today. He's the saviour of the world and you and I can meet with him and sup with him today. Hallelujah. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.